talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa, cindyschulte.com, and Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Catholic Woman Now. I'm Julie Nelson. Good morning. I'm Chris McGruder. And we are so pleased that you t- chose to be with us today. Um, we are here for you, and we are so grateful for all of our listeners, and we do pray for you every day in our prayers. And thank you for all that you do for us here at Iowa Catholic Radio and for your prayers for us Amen. as well. Amen. Well, should we start with a prayer this That's morning? Exactly. We should do that. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, just to give you a little update on our show here, we have Layla Miller coming back and joining us. She was on a few few months ago talking about raising chaste men, um, sons as chaste men. And today she's coming to talk to us about her new book, Primal Loss, Healing uh, Stories of Children Who, uh, Adult Stories of Children Who Grew Up um, in a divorce situation. So. Yeah, and it's interesting because she herself was not a product of divorce, but she has friends who have shared things with her that what she's learned that she can share these things that some of these kids can't share right. because of their own situation. So it's it's very interesting. She's and, got a she's got a perspective on it that I had not heard. Well, and and I think there's just just this mis conception out there that um, children do fine in a divorce. They can rally. They are, they're resilient. And that's not true. And she's got a lot of great um, information and stories to, to tell about that and the emotional pain that they've ex- experienced. And some ways to talk to people who are considering divorce to maybe right. give them some um, food for thought. Yes, because we've all been in those situations. And, mm-hmm. and I think we all probably have felt this need to say something, but wasn't sure what to say. And sometimes you're a lone voice in a group. Uh, of women, you know, talking about this and you may have a friend and they're thinking about leaving their husband. And so it, 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 we really need to be courageous and empowered to do that. And she's got some great ideas on how to do that. Loving, Loving. merciful ways. Yes. yes to, to, so, to so stay tuned because we, we are going to get to talk with her most of the, uh, half hour here today. And if you have any questions for Layla or would like to af- offer a comment, you can text us at 515-223-1150. We do like to hear from you, and we love that interaction. The conversation can continue on here beyond the, our studio here in the Catholic Women Coffee Table. Here, right, so all the speak. buzz. All the buzz. All so. the buzz. Speaking of buzz, we've got a big buzz with a new bishop coming in. I know. It's wow. so exciting. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it on John's show this morning because of all the excitement and talk yes, about it. Yes, it's yeah. very exciting. So Father William Johansson. He's coming. He actually was raised in Ames and is a cyclone. Woo hoo! I Go know, cyclone. and his brother attends church at St. Luke's, I believe, in Ankeny. Yes. So he was here for his uh, nephew's confirmation. Yes, I think and it was. I think presently he's in the Dubuque Diocese and has been teaching at Loris, Loris mm-hmm. but is coming back home. That's yeah, kind of so, fun. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to, to have him on board and we we'll continue to pray for him as he takes this new position in his, in his ministry as bishop. It's, right. Yeah. We've, gosh, he's gotten a lot of prayer over the last year and a half. Yeah. I think Bishop Pates is probably ready to hand over the reins. Right. When, when we were grateful <laughs> the, for all the, that Bishop Pates has done oh, for goodness. us too in our diocese yes. as well. So much, so much so, definitely. Yeah. And thank you to Cindy Schulte of Farm Bureau Financial Services for helping Catholic women now. She's an authorized independent agent, and she and her team provide health insurance options from Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. She does a great job of helping us understand the insurance needs and puts everything into lay terms for us. And if you need somebody like her, she is at cindyschulte.com. Or you can call her at 515-226-2111. There we go. Well, we're excited to welcome to the show again. And joining us today is Layla Miller. Layla has written a book called Primal Loss, The Now Adult Children of Divorce Speak. So, Layla, thank you so much for joining us today and being part of our show and having this conversation. Oh, thank you, Julie and Chris. It's great to be back with you. I appreciate it. Oh, well, we we were just talking in our introduction. It's interesting that you wrote a book um, or compiled these stories because you yourself have not experienced that as you, uh, divorce as you were growing up. So how did someone like you find yourself writing this book? Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's really curious. It was not on my radar screen at all. Um, it was I was about 50 years old when this 
uh, happened. <laughs> and uh, I am not divorced. My parents are not divorced. I don't have any um, real life experience with that. So um, what happened was I have a group of Catholic friends, and one of them is a child of divorce from when her, I mean, her parents divorced when she was probably six. And she's now in her 40s. She's happily married with six kids. Um, but in the course of our conversations over the years, she had started to um, say things that were unfamiliar to me, things that were complications in her life, things that were uh, the source of some stumbling and frustration. Nothing, you know, I mean, not crazy venting and being angry and mad, and, but just things that I thought, well, this is odd. I don't know what she's talking about. And it, it was always connected to the fallout from the divorce back when she was a tiny girl, you know, stepmothers and half, uh, you know, steps siblings and visits and holidays and and just different ways, different dynamics, Um, you know, boyfriends that were in and out of her mom's life, all all these different things that happened. And uh, I I told her at one point, I said, wow, you know, you should write about this. Like, people don't know this, people like me. And she said, oh, you know, maybe I will one day. And But she never did. So I just decided to throw out a questionnaire to my uh, social media um, followers. And off the top of my head, I came up with uh, what ended up being about eight questions, literally just thought up off the top of my head, and, um, and I got back this avalanche of people who wanted to answer these questions anonymously. I said, this will be anonymous. You don't have to worry that your name is going to be out there, and uh, I call it an avalanche of pain. You know, what I got back was, I was, it was unexpected, and many people couldn't even finish the questionnaire because it was too much emotionally for them. Well, um, so what, can you share what some of those sufferings were? Oh, gosh, yeah. So the sufferings, um, first of all, a lot of them don't even realize that anyone else feels this way. So there's an isolation factor with the children, the adult children of divorce, where, remember, the narrative is you're supposed to get over it. Like, it's fine. Right. You know, the adults are happy. They made a great decision for themselves, and, and now the kids are supposed to be happy because the adults are happy. And, you know, this is just, um, you know, people fall out of love, or, you know, there's a situation you just have to, you have to get out of it. And, um, and generally, we're not talking about these, these heavy abuse situations because most divorces are not that. Um, and even that, you know, that's a whole other topic for probably another show. But, but even those kids, you still, you're still going to suffer the loss of your foundation, of your identity, because your parents are now enemies, basically. They don't want to be together. And that shatters the foundation that is really um, primal in a person because, of course, God, God planned it so that each child would have an intact family, a mother and a father in the home raising them. So isolation, um, a loss of identity that's just incredible. Um, the idea that when they approach their own marriages, even years down the line, um, the insecurity that grips them from beginning to end, it is, I had no idea that so many people were in marriages that are even good, good marriages to saintly people even, who are so anxiety-ridden about when this will end and when is he going to leave and when is, you know, when do I have to leave? Um, Because that's all they've seen, that conflict leads to permanent separation, so they think that's going to happen to them and it's an ongoing anxiety, um, and all of this was so similar between men, women, um, even depending on the age that, that they, uh, the parents divorced, depending on, even if it was a good divorce versus a messy divorce, the feelings are all strikingly similar, so much so that some of the contributors came to me later and said, I, I, I swore I was reading my own passage, and I came to the number at the end of the paragraph, and it was someone else. Oh, yeah. That, that, well, you've really hit on to a, a topic that really needs to be discussed and brought out into the open. If you've just joined us, we were talking with Layla Miller about her new book, a Primal Loss, The Now Adult Children of Divorce Speak. And we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we're going to dive into this a little bit more with Layla. Think you can't afford to send your kids to Catholic school? Well, think again. Now more families than ever qualify for tuition assistance from the Catholic Tuition Organization. In fact, a family of four with household income less than $103,000 now qualifies. And it's easy to apply. Find out more at ctoiowa.org or 515-237-5010. What's our bottom line at CTO? It's for the kids and their future. Thank you, Blessment International, for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Everyone lives their life 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. How we use that time directly affects if our life will leave a significant impact or not. 
Each year, Blessment International leads Central Iowans on a 12-day, all-inclusive experience sharing the heart of Christ with children in South Africa. Teams are forming to do something significant in an African child's life. Learn more at blessmentinternational.org. That's blessmentinternational.org. Is it time for a new roof? Then it could be time for you to get to know Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company entering its 30th year of business. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. At Golden Rule, you already know we obey the rules to live by. We know that there are no medals for providing outstanding customer service. It's just what you do when your customers are like family. That's why we provide state-of-the-art training for all of our employees. From customer service to routine maintenance and new equipment, you can always count on Golden Rule. And by taking care of our family, we can take better care of yours. I'm Bobby from Golden Rule, where we deliver respect, understanding, loyalty, expertise, and service every time you call. We have a standard and we prove it. Online at GoldenRulePHC.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you for joining us. If you just tuned in, we are speaking with Layla Miller. She is the author of Primal Loss, the Now Adult Children of Divorce Speak. And right before the break, we just talked about some of the emotional pain that adult children are adults. I guess they're adult children of divorce are, are coming out with that the, you know, we don't realize that children are really absorbing a lot of the pain in a divorce situation. And you don't outgrow those insecurities. I think that's what happens yeah. is you take a lot of that distrust, no matter how kind or wonderful your spouse might be, but they take those into their own marriages and those fears that come along with having been a divorced child. And, you know, Layla, and I just think that just shows how deeply entrenched this becomes into a person's heart, mind, and soul that we don't realize. But, Layla, you know, there's another thing, that aspect here, too, is about, you know, are we, what can we do to uh, to bolster teaching, or the Catholic faith um, teaching on marriage? Because there's a disconnect with that in the culture. Mm-hmm. And I want to add, before I get to that, I just want to add that um, you, you won't get straight answers and true answers from even the adult children of divorce, because they are going to stick with the narrative as long as their parents are alive, and they're not going to want to alienate them just sure, like they, they did when they were a right. kid. They don't want to hurt their feelings. They don't. No. They love yes. their parents. Yes. They love their parents. And there, several of the, uh, the participants said they are literally terrified. One of them used the word terrified that she would be found out, that her mom would, would figure out that she isn't okay, because they just don't. It, it, is, it is their biggest fear. The, the, the relationship with their parents Decades later, and I have now a friend who um, uh, runs a group for, uh, uh, it's um, a secret, secret groups for the adult children of divorce on Facebook, and she has hundreds of people in these groups, and all, pretty much one of the major themes is that they still have to figure out how to navigate talking to their parents, just, just in general about holidays and things like that. They would never even touch the idea of telling them how much they actually were hurt by this and harmed by the divorce. So, I'm guessing that this is a motivation to stay married for those people, too, you know, to work harder at it. It is, and they and they desperately want to. The problem is a lot of them don't know. They've never seen a model of it, yeah, and they don't sure. have the tools. It, they sure. haven't seen that what is one it, of the four P's of marriage is permanence. They have, exactly. not, seen, they have not seen that exactly. model. Yeah. Which brings us to what you said, like how do we teach the faith? How do we, you know... Um, in the Old Testament, it says God hates divorce. In the New Testament, Christ actually forbids divorce, and there were no exceptions for that. That's a Protestant mistranslation, the idea that, well, adultery is a... No, there, is no, there was no exception for that. And so the question, and we always used to know that, you know, this is permanent. The vow mm-hmm. is permanent. If you look at the vow, it's very simple. And 50% of it is that you're vowing something negative, like bad times, uh, sickness, uh, you know, that includes moral sickness. Um, you know, things like that. And we don't think of that anymore. We think of, well, but that doesn't really count if we're really unhappy. And But no, it does. And so I always say, you know, we can't end God's story in the middle because there's so much redemption to come if we go through the cross to the other side. And, and I think, and that is what's something people want to shrug away from pain and suffering. We're yes. such a culture of, you know, instant gratification, mm-hmm. instant healing. Yeah, yeah. many yes. times Julie and I talk about how so many times when people choose to stay together, when they look back at the bridge that they crossed, they're so much stronger, and many yeah. times, four out of five of them will say they're happier. Right. Oh, they, statistically they say, like, if you go through a year of just misery and you, and you uh, don't divorce, but you, you know, wanted to, 
you will be happier on the other end of it. But nobody wants to get past that mm-hmm. and do that work and maybe think, gosh, it's childbearing, my hormones are all messed up, or the guy, you know, he's going through a midlife crisis or whatever's happening. Get past it to the other side because God has something incredible for mm-hmm, you. Right. Mm-hmm. No, the matter, no matter the hurt. I mean, I know people who have been, you know, in adulterous situations and held on. Yes. And it's so much happier today. So yes. It's so beautiful to see. Yeah, I do, too. And yeah. people don't tell those stories or they don't hear about it enough because you're encouraged once someone cheats, for example, you're encouraged, oh, you know, you don't deserve that. You right. need to go. Don't leave, forgive that person. Leave that slacker of a husband exactly. or slacker of a wife. Yeah. You could deserve better. And, right. right. And, and, and sadly, I think sometimes we can hear that from our clergy as well. Oh, yes. And, and so oh, we yes. have and to be careful. That unforgiveness yes. will eat you up. Yes. I've yeah. seen it happen yeah, to people. It does. Oh, it absolutely. Does. But, you know, sometimes in those situations, too, when that hardship hits, there's just a certain, and this takes some time to, to look back and see, but it had to happen that way sometimes mm-hmm. for the marriage to grow. It's a purification. Yeah. I think if we can look at it, it's purifying and making new and making better mm-hmm. that God will do through that. That, that. That's a hopeful way of looking at it. Mm, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that's, and that's our faith. That's what yep. we believe is that we go through the cross to redemption. Yeah. And so um, that's true with our children. When they go through hard times, we look back and go, wow, remember those days? You know, um, with our, you know, everything. Um, that's what's happening in our church now. There's a purification happening, you know, uh-huh. but we have to stick with it and go through the, go, undergo the effects of evil to get at, to the redemption uh, on the other end of it. So. Well, you know, we're going to kind of segue in a little bit here, and then we have to take a break. But you, we kind of hit on the fact that what can we do to respond yeah. to somebody who's having a, going through this thing? And we've already talked about the hardships that's mm-hmm. going to happen, and that's one of the things. But, you know, one of the things you put on there is um, you don't have to solve their problems. Right. And I think that's a sense of women, especially we want to rush in and fix the problem for them. Mm-hmm. And sometimes what pe- women need is just a listening ear. They don't need all the friends to say, oh, you don't deserve it. Oh, he'll never change. Oh, you just need one friend to say, you know what, you probably aren't treating each other very well, you know, and maybe he's, you know, not treating you well, and, and, um, but you know what, you can get better. This can get better. Let's, let's figure out a way to get you past this and get this better for the sake of all of you. So, so what are some things that we shouldn't say oh, to, our, to our friends? Right, all that, uh, you know, um, there's a line, you know, God would never want you to suffer. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well let's look at the saints. Can we actually say that God never wants anyone to suffer? Well, our whole faith is redemptive suffering. It's being um, steadfast when when the cross comes, when something difficult is happening in our lives. We know this even athletes, they'll go through incredible uh, suffering to get to the goal. Um, But we somehow think that in the most important thing in our life, our relationship with our spouse, our vocation, that there will be no problems you know everybody should be pretty much happy most of the time yeah. once and you say the i do's it's happily ever after yeah. it, that's how it's supposed to yeah. be yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know so much in this culture of movies and you know, oh. songs this all feeds that so much yes and, and women especially i think we but we really are we want we want romance we want to be cherished we want to mm-hmm. and we have forgotten that the idea that um that a man is supposed to fulfill our every need in our lives and, and be sensitive and that's kind of a new idea because it's it's the, the nature of men and women are very different and we expect different things and while we want our husbands to be sensitive and gentle and wonderful and they can and they can learn that and they can become that we also have to remember that men are not women right we've there are differences that. yeah yeah they're yeah. not our girlfriends that's why we have girlfriends we right. can get you know the sympathetic ear from a girlfriend why we don't need our our men to be everything in the world to us right. they can't do it they're not made to to do that yes, so we yeah, have to be yeah, sensitive the, yeah this thing about best friend that well that you got to mm. take that with mm-hmm. some discretion right you know, my husband's my best friend mm-hmm. well we got to take another short break here where we're talking with layla miller the author of primal loss and we are going to be back here in a few minutes and to talk a little bit more how we can respond to women we know who are going through this situation Director of the Catholic Tuition Organization with great news for families who want to send their kids to Catholic school. Today, more families than ever will qualify for tuition assistance from CTO. Even a family of four with household income less than $103,000 now qualifies. Have questions? 515-237-5010. What's our bottom line at CTO? It's for the kids and their future. 
Hey friends, John Leonetti here. Big thanks to R&R Realty Group for underwriting my show and for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. R&R Realty Group Sierra Point Apartments are located in West Des Moines. Think granite tops, oversized windows, 24-hour health center, and heated underground parking. R&R Realty Group is locally owned by a Catholic family. A great blessing to Iowa Catholic Radio. RRRealty.com. That's RRRealty.com. At Golden Rule, you already know we obey the rules to live by. We know that there are no medals for providing outstanding customer service. It's just what you do when your customers are like family. That's why we provide state-of-the-art training for all of our employees. From customer service to routine maintenance and new equipment, you can always count on Golden Rule. And by taking care of our family, we can take better care of yours. I'm Bobby from Golden Rule, where we deliver respect, understanding, loyalty, expertise, and service every time you call. We have a standard and we prove it online at GoldenRulePHC.com. Thank Thank you to Confluence Brewing Company for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Confluence Brewing Company, brewed locally and featuring regular, seasonal, and limited-release beers available in their tap room and at local stores, bars, and restaurants. Confluence has a beer garden for you, your family, and friends to enjoy. Confluence Brewing Company is located at 1235 Thomas Beck Road off the bike trail south of Gray's Lake and online at confluencebrewing.com. Confluence Brewing Company, where good things come together, ingredients, ideas, and friends. Back to Catholic Women Now. This is Chris McGruder with Julie Nelson, and we are speaking to Layla Miller today. Layla, we were going to get into um, a little bit about we want to be able to encourage our friends now so that they'll remain in the marriage and kind of be that first responder that a lot of people aren't, you know, so many people want to tell tell their friends, you know, you deserve to be happy, get out of the marriage. Or he's we're never afraid gonna, to say something. Yeah, or he's so. never going to change, yep. life's too short, that kind of thing. Right. So what are the positive things that we can say to help encourage people to remain in the marriage and to work? Right, and, and remember that because marriage is a, a public uh, thing, it's not a private, just a private affair, all the witnesses to the marriage, all the, the best man, the, if, if, if uh, marriage is in trouble, that's our job. That's when the community comes in with support. That's when we come in and we say, hey, we'll help you. We'll get you whatever help you need. Um, you can start by just really exhorting them to first just wait even a year. Just, can you just wait a year before thinking about anything, and let's talk about um, what we can do to maybe um, get you help and, and figure out how to solve some of these problems. If you take divorce off the table mentally, if that becomes something that you do, you know, you say, what if you took divorce off the table? Then what if you're all in? What if you're all in for this marriage? How would you start to act at that point. And people have a mind change, you know, when they realize, okay, that, that, if that doesn't happen and can't happen, how would I change? It's kind of like the abortion issue. Truly, it really is. I mean, if you can, um, you know, when someone sees an out and a relief, and this is my way out of this pain and suffering, and I can see the freedom, but then you say, wait a minute, what if you took that off the table? What would you do? You know, would you name your child? What, would, what good could you see coming out of this? Can you see overcoming the hardships and getting to the end? It changes the mindset. And sometimes that's all we need is one friend to just say, Let, let's look at it a different way. And then, you know, again, you don't have to be the therapist. That's not, you know, your job. You're just the one to maybe have it. Just, just give it a second look and take it off the table. Be the encourager. And then you can look for therapists and priests and others who aren't going to be at divorce affirmers who can really help them through the problem. And uh, it's amazing when that happens, and it does happen. That's the thing. I have a, I have a whole section in the back of the book called Stories of Hope, which because you don't want to leave everybody with these stories of these poor kids who grew up and, well, and they still have. And you're working on a new book on that, too, as well. Yes, absolutely. I, so the, the Chapter 10 in Primal Loss is, is Stories of Hope, and, and my bishop, Bishop Olmsted, and um, um, some other priests said, we need a whole book that's just book, you know, Stories of Hope of people who overcame really difficult things to come to this redemption that was just so sweet and beautiful. And, uh, and I am collecting those now, and it's, just, it's been amazing. And I know for a fact that there's not one situation that cannot be overcome, because, first of all, saying that then negates our God. Our God can redeem anything. That's Amen. Right. He works beyond our brokenness. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's mm-hmm. a supernatural reality, you know, mm-hmm. that he, he is our our God who redeems all. 
And the thing is, too, is won't, don't we want to be available to as much grace as he can offer to us that we can receive? And, and working through this is opening ourselves to so much more grace that would ever be there otherwise. Oh, this is saint-making stuff. I mean, isn't yes. that the goal of our lives as Catholics? Right. This is what we are doing here. To get <laughs> so. each other to heaven, that's the number one goal, right? Number one goal. Well, we're, we're um, coming to the end of the show here, Layla. So we just want to thank you so much for your work you're doing with marriages and helping people to to stay in, stay in the marriage and, and fortify our culture through the gift of marriage to, to our society. And if anybody wants to find Layla, she's at LaylaMiller.com. Thank you. Actually, dot .net. Dot, dot .net. net. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So, and it's L-E-I-L-A if anybody wants to. Yeah, right. a little. All yes. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Julie and Chris. I appreciate it. God bless you. you thank God you. bless you. Catholic Women Now is grateful for the support of Mr. Haas, attorney at law. Mr. Haas is dedicated to providing personal and highly responsive legal services to people who have suffered an injury. FredHaas.com. Fred double D, Haas double A. Hey, we're going on the road. Stop and say hello to Iowa Catholic Radio and Ray Bry. They'll be at... St. Thomas Aquinas in Indianola next week. And they're also going to be at the State Fair. Yes, and we'll be at the State Fair August 8th through the 18th across from the Bill and Ann Riley stage. That's right. Stop she, you us. want to take us out in prayer here, Jules? Let's do that. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we just lift up to you anybody here today listening who are struggling in their marriage, and we just want to offer hope and encouragement to these people and to to tap into the great love that the Lord has for you and to understand as you come closer to Jesus, he will give you what you need to get through this trial and it will be so much more beautiful and purifying in the end. And Lord Jesus, we just ask you to give them that grace and to instill it in their hearts. And we ask this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. From the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Iowa Catholic Radio Rosary is up next, and it's always prayed at 5.30 a.m. as well as 9.30 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. And the Iowa Catholic Radio Rosary at 9.30 a.m. is dedicated to the needs of our country, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for listening, and please consider consider making a $30 a month tax-deductible donation to Iowa Catholic Radio as we continue to teach, evangelize, and defend the Catholic faith. Now go do impossible things with God. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. And Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. CindySchulte.com. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder every Thursday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. On the radio voice for Catholic Women Now. 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app, Iowa Catholic Radio.